Good evening and welcome everyone to Alumni Gymnasium at Holton High School where tonight we're bringing you our final regular season broadcast. Tim Tweedy and Rob Moran here. Rob, two Class C girls teams that will be going into the postseason. There's no doubt about it at this point. It's just a matter of the positioning possibly for the Hawks. Holton's locked in at number one as they're still currently undefeated. They're about as locked in as you can be. And while the rivalry might not mean as much as what it once did, these are two teams that people are looking forward to watching uh, over the next couple weeks in the postseason. Absolutely. For the Hawks, if they can find a way to win the game, it might get them a home playoff game. That's how many points the Holton girls are, are worth. And obviously a tall task coming in here on senior night and trying to get a win and uh, deal with everything Holton will throw at them. But you never know. That's why they play the games. We say this is really just one large community, Holton and Hodgton combined. We combine on a lot of other things. And, you know, tonight to meet his foes on the, on the court. But, uh, you know, there, it's the first time the two teams have played in a number of years after the reconfiguration of the classes and whatever else. Uh, kind of neat because it's always a good environment when these two teams get together. Yeah, always. It's kind of a tournament environment most of the time. It's usually get a huge crowd, pretty good crowd here. Still a little bit before game time. Probably going to fill in a little more for sure. But uh, a great atmosphere. And most of the time when these teams play, you can throw out the record and anything can happen. In addition to the two teams that are playing, we have so much to talk about here tonight on WHOU. Uh, we are trying something new tonight where we're bringing you an option to watch this game online in three, with 360 camera here. You can go on, you can watch it with virtual reality if you want. You get your own unique viewing experience. It's incredible. Um, we've, we've even got a nice new banner advertising it here behind us, but you can move your iPad, you can move your device, your mouse, and you can change the view that you have of the court. So that's really cool. In addition to that, uh, they've been working tirelessly back at the station over the last day and a half to bring you a big boys game down in Washington County. The Holton Varsity boys are currently playing as we speak at Callis High School. We were unable to send a crew down there as we've got a game tonight also going on up in Presque Isle. There's another game going on in Orono. So what do we do? They find a way to make it work. And, and I say we. I had nothing to do with it. I'm just telling you, Fred and Ian have been working hard. They're pulling some video off a stationary camera they've got in the gym. They found a radio station down there that had some audio. Somehow they work their magic. They get it all to work. And you can catch that game on our website, whoufm.com. You can turn over there right now and catch the beginning of th that one if you want while this game's being, uh, while they're just warming up. Pretty incredible, huh, Rob? It is incredible, and what a great service. Uh, that game down in Callis, just a huge game for the Shires tonight. They really need a win to secure a home prelim game, uh, so it's a big game. Not quite as big a game for Callis. Callis is in. I think Callis can maybe move up a spot, but they're going to have, it looks like they're going to have a road playoff game either way, but for, for the Shires, great game, and just it's incredible that they're, that uh, Fred was able to do that and, and allow people a chance to watch that game without having to drive two and a half hours down down, down to Callis. There's no doubt about it. WHOU is Northern Maine's leader in sports. And four games going on here tonight. Bonus game with that one in Callis. You're not going to hear our regular announcers by any means. Hopefully everything's matching up video and audio wise. Um, again, it's, it's, better than, it's better than nothing. Put right. it that way. There's no production like we normally have but if if you're able to tune in and, and catch that and you know it started a little early it started at 6 30 it's just a, a bonus production for you so again a pretty cool thing we're going to take a break here from our Holton Fair pregame show turn it back to our sponsors for two minutes and then bring it back here to talk about these two teams and plenty more right here it's WHOU
UNC girls matchup here. Holton and Hodgden, pretty good uh, game for the end of the regular season as, again, these two schools have not met in a number of years. Been two years uh, since the last time that, that they met or they took a couple seasons off, but here they are. Holton currently coming in at number one. They are ranked 17-0. Coach Sean Graham and his team, a well-oiled machine. They're going to break the record for the most heel points that anybody's ever had in a season out. With that being said, when they move to a five-class system, the heel points are worth more. Doesn't really matter, though. They, by, by the end of tonight, they could have as many points as numbers two and three combined. Have you ever seen anything like that before? I haven't. And if, if you look at the, the schedule they play, most of the teams they have have, you know, upwards of 14 or 15 wins. So uh, it's a really impressive feat. They beat a lot of good teams this year. Really, they haven't had... I'm sure there is one or two that I'm just not thinking uh, off the top of my head what they are, but games within single digits, to be honest. Uh, no, I, you they, know. Most games they've won handily. I mean, there's points where they've been single digits, right. like, you know, in the second half, but they've won yeah. going away, you know, in the end. But uh, Absolutely. The Central girls played them very tough here. I think they played them pretty tough down there. Of course, both Prescott Isle games are pretty tough. Caribou away. Yep. Uh, was, was, I that think was. Caribou had a lead. Yep. Late in the game. That, that might have been the latest uh, that they were behind. But uh, other than that, to, to my knowledge, we've seen a lot. Callis of them. was tight the other one. night yep. in, 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 in the second half. But, you know, it, it, they've just, you know, they've dispatched everybody so far that they've seen, including that game in Callis that they played the other night where Colleen Bouchard exploded for 40 points, her highest output of the season. So, you know, there's that. But let's not forget about these Hodgson Hawks. They come in here with a win winning record. It wasn't that long ago. They went two seasons in a row without a win. Coach Harvey and his club are now coming in here with a 9-8 and eight record. They're guaranteed to not have a losing uh, record, at least you know for the regular season. And uh, they're currently ranked 13th. As you said, they can still move up a decent amount with a victory here tonight. Got to be impressed with the job they've done, and what a quick turnaround. Absolutely. Uh, from from a couple years ago, not you know really struggling and, Last year they were pretty competitive, and this year they've made it all the way to the postseason, and so that's you know that's a cherry on top. And when you get to the postseason, anything can happen. Uh, looks like they're going to have to go down to Nairaguegas possibly. Yeah, that's a long bus ride, and that's a a good battle-tested team. Um, but you never know; anything can happen. Like I said, that's why we play the games. And and it's not they they just don't you know have control of their own destiny. There's other games being played tonight that will help determine exactly where they go. The way I looked at it, and, and you're talking about a novice here, but it looked like Nairguegas, like you said, maybe Central Rustic, possibly even Central and East Corinth uh, as possibilities. But, you know, I, I, one team wins a game they shouldn't, one team loses a game they right. shouldn't, and next thing you know, things change very quickly as uh, double heel points are sometimes on the line for teams that have won twice and, and all those different things as well. There, there's all kinds of big games tonight. Uh, you know, for example, the, the uh, Prescott Caribou boys, that's a huge game for the Holton boys. Yeah. They obviously would love Caribou to, to pull an upset. Holton has a chance, the boys, to get up to the seventh spot and get out of that really difficult opening round game. But First of all, you got to play the prelim, so you never want to look past that. But yeah. That opening round game against short Stevens, nobody wants to play them first. Well, they'd certainly love that. We'll try to keep you updated on the score of that game down there. As again, you can catch that over on another stream. It is senior night here at Alumni Gymnasium. Mr. Bruce Nason is waiting down on the floor as we are going to take uh, a break in the action with five minutes still left on the clock here. Warm us, make sure that they recognize all of the senior athletes. The gym is uh, full over on the band side of. of student athletes you've got the cheerleaders here you and i were in hodgden the other night for their senior night and now tonight they're going to recognize in addition to those groups of uh, the holton band members and the the uh, cheerleaders also the holton girls basketball team who have i believe four seniors out there so we're going to go ahead and take this down to mr bruce nason on the floor Participating on their squads or teams here at Holton High School. 
Our senior girls basketball team has had a record of 79 wins and five losses over their career. We want to thank both groups for all the time we've put in, all the practices, all the games, and the countless miles on the buses. It has been a pleasure to watch you all grow as freshmen and now as seniors. We want to wish you the best as you move on to future endeavors and thank you for all the hard work. And first group we'd like to recognize tonight is our cheerleaders. When I call your name, please come forward and receive a flower from your coaches. And please thank your parents for all they have done for you over the years. Our first senior cheerleader is Delaney Dupre. Just like that, those are the senior night ceremonies. There's still five minutes left here to warm up. Uh, for anybody who did not tune into our game, our broadcast, Rob and I were out to the Hawks Nest on Tuesday, and so we uh, we experienced their senior night, and uh, that was a nice event. So we're not ignoring Hodgson. We did that Tuesday night. There's a lot to be said about these Holton girls. And uh, Mr. Mason said, 79 wins and five losses. <laughs> five losses. That's pretty impressive. I, Rob, there's probably like two or three teams in their division who don't have, or that class that don't have that many losses this season. And th these girls have gone uh, one game short of four years, and they've made it to the, they've played the maximum number of games every season. I mean, have you seen, in, there's not a whole lot like this, right? Right, it doesn't happen very often. I mean, some teams have had runs like this, but so they're pretty rare. Uh, of course, Coach Donato back in the in the 80s, he had some great, incredibly talented teams and uh, lots of gold balls back then yeah. as well. But this team, you know, they've really done a great job. Uh, 79 and 5, and a lot, a lot, think about that. You know, during that time, they played some really good teams. 
Uh, Presque Isle girls have been very good that whole time, and that's, you know, eight games against them. They didn't win them all. They lost to Presque Isle a few times. Yeah. Caribou girls are a decent team as well, and, and you know, the Skank girls were good in there. The Stearns girls have been good in there. The Central girls have been good in there. So, you know, it's not just uh, they haven't played a lot of cupcakes. They've played some good teams as well. We've seen these types of runs uh, out of, you know, Washburn for a few years. Uh, you know, obviously we're very, very good. Lee Academy was also at that point, you know, very, very good uh, for a number of years. But so far, uh, three Eastern Maine slash Northern Maine championships, uh, two gold balls, a chance for another. 79-5 record. Um, some of the girls were uh, in my room the other day, and they were saying, well, we've played our fall season and our winter season so far, and they're trying to figure out their record. 136, 11, and 5 in the, in the fall and uh, for you know the team sport of soccer and the team sport of basketball in the winter with six regional championship game appearances. And again, in a couple weeks, they hope to be in another one. That's just... It's kind of crazy. I don't think you kept that pace in soccer. I think we need to talk about that and find out. Yeah, no, <laughs> I think they, they've got us there. There's no question about it. And, no, I mean, uh, it's I just, hope they I hope they're able to get another one in, here. Incredible group of girls and dedicated coaching staff with with uh, the soccer team as well as the basketball team. There's been a lot of people that put a lot of hours into these girls, parents, and and uh, uh, you know everybody else. It's just a just a talented special group of kids who. They're, you know, you don't ever really I, – I haven't seen one time this year, and we've done most of their games, I, I haven't seen one time where I felt like there was a danger of them losing the game. I I, I never felt like they were going to lose, and, and th they play that way. You don't see them get rattled very often. I, I can count it on one hand where, over the years where, where I've seen that, and uh, you know, that's a credit to the, to the players and the coaches. Two minutes left in our Holton Fair pregame show, Rob. Uh, we're going to keep you here and just talk for a minute about these Hodgson Hawks. As we've had a chance to see them now a couple times in the last couple of weeks. Why don't you fill our listeners in about some of the players they've got over on our right side. Sure. Um, the Hawks are, are a team that's good size. They have a lot of strength inside, a lot of good interior players. Janelle Goff, very good interior scorer. Cora Lambert is, is a really good rebounder. Cora is just a junior. Sydney Howell is kind of their do-it-all player. Very good defender. I would expect if they play man-to-man, -man, Sydney will be guarding Colleen Bouchard. Um, Sydney can score the ball as well. Saber Scott is a, is a very uh, solid-looking freshman who's, who's just gotten better in leaps and bounds. Done a real nice job for them all year long, especially lately. Megan Russell is a, a senior who um, has done a lot of good things for them. Emma Drew is their point guard. Um, Emma's gotten better and better. Kylie Moores is somebody who I really think has come on lately and, and done a really good job for them. There are a lot of seniors on Hodgson, a lot of freshmen, not a lot of people in between. No, you're right about that. So, they're about ready to get underway in this one. We're going to have the player introductions. Looks like Miss Taylor Cowan, who typically does them, will have that. And uh, we'll wait for Taylor to take it away down there on the court. And looks like she's about set to go. Tonight and ongoing through February 23rd, our athletic teams will be having a raffle to help out a local family, the Urban family. We will be selling raffle tickets at one for $5 and three for $12. The raffle includes the following, a signed boys and girls basketball, an autographed frame photo of all the sports teams, a Shires hat and sweatshirt, and a basket from the hockey team. We will also be donating the boosters portion of the 50-50 into this. You can get tickets tonight at the boosters table or you can purchase from any of the athletes from any of our teams. Let's help out this family and show our support. Thank you. 
And here we go, we are ready to get underway on this one. Mr. David Day and Mr. Evan Clark are gonna be our two officials for this one. Two gentlemen that most people in this area, if you're a basketball fan, you are very familiar with. We wanna ask you if you are listening and you've got either my or Rob's numbers, we're not gonna broadcast them online, but if you know any scores that are out there tonight, you can keep us updated between the snowstorm uh, yesterday and then games are already scheduled for tonight. There's a lot of big games, so we'd like to keep everybody updated as much as possible. So feel free to text us or message in on the comment section if you're watching on Facebook Live, and let's try to keep everybody informed. A ton of games tonight that uh, have real meaning in the playoff standings. Once again, if you're watching in the way we've brought it to you all season long, you can also click on and watch in the 360 viewing. As we've been told, it's pretty darn cool. Mr. Day has the ball, he's gonna to toss it up. The tip's gonna be won by Bouchard. Here come the Shires. Bouchard, top, over to Tegan Ewings. To Fwelling, now Carolyn Moores with it in the corner. It's the four seniors in Ewings starting for the Shires. Moores, Graham, Fwelling, Bouchard, and Ewings. Lambert, Drew, Scott, Howell, and Goff for the Hawks. The three's gonna be put up and that's gonna go out and over as Aspen Fuelling put up a three from the left side, no good. It's gonna be a Hawk basketball. Now Hodgson did a decent job that time getting out on shooters. Came out in that familiar 2-3 zone, we see a lot out of them. Now, here with it for Hodgson is gonna be Drew. She's gonna go inside on the block. Howell had a look at it, couldn't get it to go, but she's gonna be fouled in the action. Yeah, nice strong move there by Sydney Howell. She did, made the nice deep catch and Strong move to the rim, got the two shots out of it. Foul's gonna go against number 42, that's Carolyn Moores of the Shires. Hodgson has a chance to go to the free throw line. Howell, first shot's up. That's no good. She's gonna have a second look. She dips, second free throw is up. No good, rebound brought away by Graham. The Shires flying up right to left. They take it in towards the end near the band. Goff with a block, but she cost some body of Bouchard, so Bouchard will go to the free throw line. Well, she had a lot of ball up top, though. Sure did. Pretty good, pretty good defensive play. Did have some body. First time these two teams played, it was Holton pulling out the 48-17 victory that game back on January 3rd. Bouchard and Fulelling tied for the team lead with 10 points for the Shires, and that one is Bouchard gets her first free throw to go. 7.16 left here in the first quarter. The fans now will sit. Second free throw's up and that's also as good. So Holton with a 2-0 lead. 
for Hodgson in that first game. Sidney Howell and Janelle Goff led the way. They had five points each in that one. Scott with it for the Hawks. Dribbling over on the right side. Picks up her dribble against Graham. Needs help. Bouchard's going to pick it off. She's all by her alone. So I'm going to lay it up with her left hand. Up and in. And that's going to be something that Hodgson really needs to cut down on. Those, those turnovers out by the top of the key. That's, that's like a free two points for Holton. Holton not putting any pressure on. Instead, they're going to match up man-to-man. -man. Scott again working against Graham. Moores is going to deny for Holton. Help defense comes over from Fuelling. Loose rebound is going to be brought down by Lambert. She finds Goff. She wants the basketball. Puts it up. Foul line extended. Can't get it to go. Lambert, though, is going to have a second look at it. She gets it to go. Gets the Hawks on the board. It's 4-2 Holton. Poor Lambert. Such a hard worker on the offensive glass. Stayed right with it. There are two offensive rebounds. Bouchard sets up. Moores puts up a three. Just long. No good. Graham, though, tracks down the offensive board. Bouchard with it, up top, being guarded by Scott. Again, we are just underway in this one. Carolyn Morse swings it around right side. They're going around the horn, find Fuelling in the short corner. Gets it into Bouchard in the paint. She's going to spin left, puts it up left, gets it to go. Not even sure she saw the hoop when she initially turned, Rob. But That's a, such a tough shot. It's a little baby hook left-handed about 10 feet. She Not makes even, that look easy, though, doesn't yeah, she? She's such a good left hand. Again, coming off a game the other night where she – had uh, 40 points, that was Monday down in Callis. Saber Scott picks up her dribble, she's trying to find Howell, she does. Howell's gonna put up a shot from the block. It's gonna be off, and last touch by Lambert in the rebounding action, so it's gonna be Holton basketball. Again, that shot that she made a second ago, right underneath the basket, it's a pretty easy shot, but from seven, eight feet out like that one was, that's a much tougher shot. Now Bouchard. Going to swing it over around. Fuelling in the corner is going to launch up a three. Gets it to go. 9-2 Holton. And it just got an update from our buddy Robert Holmes. He tells us Holton's up 38-17 at the half down in Callis. That's got to be good news for our listeners. Yeah, great great start for Holton for sure. I want to thank Bob for that and ask him to keep us posted as this pass is going to come in. And Howell with a good look again on the block. She's had a couple good looks, but just can't get it to go. Rebound's going to be brought away by Holton. Five minutes left to go here in the opening quarter. you just got to finish those when you have the opportunity in a game like this. Uh, to have any chance to win, you got to make shots. Bouchard. On a look. Dribble left. Kicks it to Fwelling. Now to Graham. She's in the short corner. Passes up a shot instead. Holton's going to pull it out, and Coach Sean Graham's yelling for a timeout, and official... He finally got his attention. Holt wants to talk things over. 4.39 left to go here in the opening quarter. It's just a 30-second timeout. We'll take it with him. Be right back here on WHOU. Back and live at Alumni Gymnasium. Holton enjoying a 9-2 lead, and they have the basketball here out of the timeout. Tegan Ewings is going to take it out. Gets it to Bouchard. She wants to line up a three. No good front rim. Graham in the rebounding action comes down with it, but she's immediately circled by four Hawks, and Sabre Scott just snatches it away. That's good battle, though, by Kristen Graham. Nice, tough offensive rebound there. Scott gets it over to Drew. Now to Howell. Howell working against Moores. And that pass is going to be just off the mark. It's going to sail out of bounds, so it'll be Holton basketball. Not a great angle. Not a lot of space to make that pass. Just got to be patient if it's not there. Bouchard with it. Snaps it over. Welling. In on the block. Graham finds herself all alone. Can't get that to go. Dribble might have cost her there, Rob, as she might have been able to put that up just a little earlier before the defense collapsed, but it's going to be last touched off of Hodgson, so it'll remain with Holton. You see that happen a lot, though, that power dribble people take, and a lot of times they don't need it. Yeah, and it's, and it's habit because, yep, you know, you want to be able to feel where the defender is. Sometimes when you're by yourself, it just feels a little funny. You know, all 5'7 of me speaking with my experience in the post. I bet you played bigger. <laughs> you bet wrong. <laughs> Keegan Ewing's with it. Up top is Bouchard. Back over to Ewing. She's going to take a long two. Can't get it to go. Rebound brought away by Janelle Goff. 
Great team rebound in that time by Hodgson. Everybody blocked out well. We got some size on this Hodgson team, no doubt about it. As the ball's going to be stripped away, but then it finds Cora Lambert. And I think they're going to get Fluelling here. As Lambert's going to go to the free throw line, she, she'll have a pair. And nice, it is on Fluelling. Nice strong spin there by Cora Lambert. Last regular season game for both of these two teams. Megan Russell is going to get ready to check in here for Hodgden. That free throw is off the mark for a Lambert. Tessa Solomon's going to check in for Holton. She's going to get Tegan Ewings. Looks like Catherine Redeker is going to check in here as well for Hodgden. And she's going to, well, she's getting the shooter, so they're going to bring her back to the table here. But For Hodgden, I haven't heard anything about what they're going to do. Uh, of course, they're going to have a prelim. And so Cora Lambert now will get a chance to come out. Not sure if they've got anything scheduled for this weekend as far as a scrimmage goes. I, I haven't heard. The Holton girls got to go play in the PVC Championship game on Monday in a game uh, that's at Howland against Dexter. How do you feel about that, Rob? As a coach who's had to do that before, you don't really get to line up the opponent that you want as far as getting to work on things for the postseason. Well, of course, it's a nice honor to be asked to play in that game as Bouchard's going to, there's going to be a blocking foul go. She's going to have her path cut off to the lane. You, get, you kind of are reluctant to show everything. It's not like, though. I mean, in, in the, with things today, uh, Jody Grant, and if he's watching tonight, hello, Jody. I don't know if they have a game. Jody's a good uh, friend. He's, he's a great coach. Um, you know, he's seen Holton plenty of times with, with the advent of technology and video, but you're still going to be careful about what you do and what you show. And that's any team playing in that game. You're yeah. out of bounds plays, your offenses. You yeah. know, there's not a lot of, you want to showcase, and so... Do you prefer to play against somebody who uh, you're not worried about picking up on your tendencies? And yeah, and the thing is, uh, the, the, by the nature of it, the team that you're playing, there's a good chance you're going to play them in the tournament. That happened with us uh, a couple different times we played in that. And, you you know, you're kind of hesitant about showing everything. Goff's going to commit the foul there for Hodgson, her second, team's third. Colleen Bouchard's at the free throw line. She gets that one to go. Substitution's going to come in here. For the Hawks, that's going to be Kylie Moores checking in. She'll get Goff. Makes it 10-3, Holton. Exactly three minutes left to go here in the first quarter. Second free throws up. That's good as well. 11-3, Holton. Russell with the ball for the Hawks. She brings it up, gets it over half court. She picks up her dribble. Solomon defending her now. It's over to Moores. Scott looking to drive along the right side, picks up her dribble, has to find help. She finds it in Moores. Hodgson's going to look to reset. Holton playing pretty good man. Scott with it. And she just didn't get the dribble down as she was defended well there by Kristen Graham. So the freshman with a traveling violation turn it over to the Shires. Kristen Graham is a, such a good all-purpose defender. You know, she, she, she can guard bigs and she can guard the perimeter. Welling's going to put up another three. That one's off the mark. No good. Bouchard is able to track it down before stepping out. She's going to drive in the lane, leaves her feet, puts it up, left-handed, no good. She's going to stick with it. And she steps on the line as she was trying to get it into Fuelling, but she stepped along the baseline. Great hustle there by Colleen. Just couldn't quite walk the tightrope down on the baseline. Three-time tourney MVP right there with, you know, Hustle in a, in a game where, again, there's a nice shot up and in by Sabre Scott, a game that Holt doesn't really need or they don't need. They're, they're up by big points, and they locked up first place about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Right. Makes it 11-5, Holton. Nice strong move there by Sabre Scott. Uh, she's going to be a good player, Yeah, huh? she is. I, I really like her. I think she's, she's going to be an excellent soccer player as well. She she's, does some really good things. Colleen Bouchard gets it over. Carolyn Morse swings it. Kristen Graham, her shot's up, no good. But loose ball's going to trickle out. Bouchard's going to line up a three, no good. That's short. Rebound's going to be brought away by Moores. Not a terrible shot, though. Colleen has pretty much unlimited range when she's feeling it. She can, she can stroke the three from three or four feet behind the line. 115 left to go here in the opening quarter. Hodgson with the ball. They trail by six. Howell looking to set up offense. Gets it over to Scott. She ball fakes. Passes it to Russell. You can hear Coach Wendell Harvey saying he wants a timeout, and he's going to get it here. He wants a 30-second break. We'll take it with him. 103 left to go here in the first quarter. Right back here on WHOU.
Tweedy and Rob Moran back here at Holton High School. So we're an alumni gymnasium. Hodgton and Holton. It's Hodgton with the basketball down six. Megan Russell with it. Looking to get it in. She does. She gets it to Scott. Saber Scott with it. Good defense there by the Shires as Solomon and Graham able to take the ball away. Bouchard hangs in the air for a minute. Can't get that look to go. Stays right with it. Puts up another look. Can't get it to go. She gets a rebound again. Gets it out to Fwelling. Now Holton's going to look to set up an offense. Abby Worthley has checked into the game here for the Shires. So they've got their five regular. Well, Abby's uh, been coming off the bench. She's probably their sixth man as Ewing starts. As, that's a good shot along the baseline there by Solomon. It's yeah, a that's, shot they needed to take. They do need her to take that. I was just going to say the same thing. They're not respecting her and letting her shoot. you got to knock that down. and She makes that, and it makes them really tough to guard. Where it is down to Central, she was one of the players that, as they played a triangle and two against Colleen Bouchard uh, with two defenders on her. Solomon is one of the players who really stepped up big in that one. And When teams are going to make everybody else have to beat you, and you get players like that step up and do it. You know. What else do you set up defensively as Bouchard gets out in front of the pack. Nice pass there, lead pass. And that's the way the first quarter is going to end. Bolton up 15-5. to We'll bring it right back here for the second quarter right here on WHOU. Back here for second quarter action at Alumni Gymnasium. It's going to be a Hawks ball. Rob, we want to take this opportunity to say congratulations to a couple of Aroostook County guys who were just named the Maine Basketball Hall of Fame. One of them we cover a lot, Mr. Billy McAvoy. He a uh, pretty good player down there in Sherman, and then a uh, good coach at both Central Aroostook, well, Central Aroostook, Katahdin, and Southern Aroostook. So congratulations to Billy McAvoy and also Dwight Hunter from up in Caribou. As, uh, Dwight, a longtime AD, and a little bit of Mr. Everything in the sports world up there. Uh, his son Scott, a current coach up there, you know, he, he both going to make the main basketball Hall of Fame. How cool is that? Yeah, it's awesome. Two great people. Uh, you mentioned Billy McAvoy, pretty good player. He was just ridiculously good. I was able to watch him, and he was older when I was watching. I played against him and tried to guard him. I think he he had some uh, 40 and 50 point games on Marty Bouchard, myself, and Clyde Warman. He's just a great player, a great coach, just a wonderful guy. And Dwight Hunter, just a, a class act and a guy, like you said, has done a ton so you know honor well deserved congrats goes out to both of them on one end of the floor we had Hodgson uh, have the ball picked away as Kristen Graham was able to steal it and on the other end Colleen Bouchard launched up a three and she was fouled after the shot was uh, put up or well in the shooting action she's going to have three free throws here you, you mentioned Billy McAvoy he he probably about anybody I, as good as anybody I ever saw made use of the pivot yeah. it could make Funny, strange shots while pivoting. He's just, he, he was just an incredible athlete. Well, congratulations to both of them. As that shot him as well. And then the one that everybody's kind of been waiting for, Cindy Blodgett made it in as well. And, there, and there's plenty of others, but you knew it was just a matter of time. Oh, yeah. Probably the most decorated player in, in state history, male or female. Yeah, and, uh, WNBA, number six draft pick in the WNBA. And the... Uh, had a pro career, of course, and just amazing career at UMaine, and uh, has done some coaching afterwards. Bouchard makes all three. Not really sure what happened there. Is must be something on the floor, and the official uh, the official wants to call them over and have it cleaned up. Gonna be a wet spot. So Colleen Bouchard, uh, she's seven for seven so far in the game from the foul line. We're not in the prediction business here, but you know. You got to figure. She's three times been the MVP of the tournament. She's three times led her team to state titles. There's a good chance Call gets in there someday. Oh, absolutely. I mean, she's 
join Amazing. her grandfather. Yeah. And Terry Sperling is he's already in there. He's, you know, he was a part of the an Ellsworth team that uh, made it in. Actually, Terry's been in there twice. As Carolyn Moores comes up with a steal and puts it up. She was fouled on her way to the hoop. Yeah, good strong take there by Carolyn Moores. Good defense out front. Picked the pocket and goes the other way. Megan Russell going to commit that foul. 7.04 still left to go here in the first half of play as Moores misses that free throw. Her team's up 18 to 5. She's going to have another look at it here. Shots up. And no good as well. Bouchard tries to stay with it, but tips it. It's going to be one over. That's going to be Autumn Ganzel. And there's going to be a double dribbling violation that's going to go against the Hawks. A little bit of miscommunication there that time. Uh, Between Evan Drew getting ready to make the pass, and the person she was passing to wasn't looking, so she committed the double dribble. So it's a Holton basketball. Moores goes in on the block, finds Welling. Back out, Carolyn Moores. Now way out top to Colleen Bouchard. Welling. Jamie Brown checked into the game here for the Shires. Kristen Grahams at the free throw line. And that shot's going to be up and in. Didn't catch who that was on, Rob. Did you? I think that like, was Colleen Bouchard. Just got a message here letting us know that right now Fort Kent is up over Central Roostic 11 to 5 after the first quarter. Again, we appreciate the updates coming in as Caribou up every, 20 to 10 on Presque Isle. Every game matters tonight. Holton with the steal. Bouchard working against Russell. She's going to put it up, gets it to go. 20 to 5. Holton with the lead. Six minutes left to go here in the first half of play. Shires are out by a bunch right now, showing everybody why they are the undefeated number one team in Class C. That sparkling 17 0 record. Now Holton can beat you a lot of ways. They, they're very solid defensively, they, they don't make a lot of mistakes. And they can play zone, they can play great man to man. And, uh, they press when they need to press. Good take there by Cora Lambert. Couldn't get it to go. Rebound going to be brought away. Kristen Graham with it. Moving right to left. Bouchard snaps a pass across the court. She gets it back now. She's going to line up a three. Gets it to go. She's having a heck of a half. 25 to 5. Holton, how many she got here she's so got, far, Rob? She's got 20 already. With five minutes left to go here in the second half. She might have saved her best game, or first half, I should say. I saved her best game for last. We'll see how much playing time she actually gets here as Holton's up by 20. Megan Russell's going to put up a shot. She gets it to go. Long two. Nice shot there by Russell. Yep, nice, nice shot there by Megan Russell. A lot of confidence and knocked it down. Bouchard with it. Swings it around over to Brown. Some subs are at the table. We'll get ready to have them announced as they're going to check in. Scott Howell, Abby Worthley, looks like Samantha Condon, they'll all come in. Holton keeps it simple against the 2-3. Most of the time we watch, they, they run the, a high-low, which is what a lot of teams run against the 2-3 zone, and they run it real well. They got shooters all over the place, and they pass the ball real well from the baseline to the cutter from the high post and vice versa. Kristen Graham at the free throw line here for Holton. As she prepares for this first shot, I'm going to take this opportunity to remind you so many things happening on WHOU tonight as first free throw is made. Holton and Callis boys playing right now. That game is not being covered by our crew, but what we did, they were able to get some video that they record the games on in the Callis gym, splice it up with a radio station who's covering it down there, and work their magic to bring you that game. You can find it on WHOUFM.com. Not sure if that one's going to be on Facebook or not. It was a 6.30 start. Last word we had, Holton is up. Again, it might not be what you're used to as far as quality. As the second free throw is missed, goes out of bounds, it's going to be Hodgson basketball. It might not be the same quality you're used to, but, you know, it's, it's better than nothing. It was not on the schedule. Uh, our Bangor crew was already covering a game tonight. It's Old Town at Orono. That game's at... Uh, got started at 7 o'clock, so we'll see if we can get an update on that one. You just updated us. Let us know that Caribou is up on Presque Isle, 20 to 10. That game is also going on right now, so all game, kinds of things happening. Game is now 22 to 17, so Presque Isle's made a little bit of a run to get back into it. In this one, it's Scott with it for Hodgson. Puts up a shot, no good. Kylie Moores is going to be able to track it down. 
Going to get it over to Cora Lambert. She's going to drive middle. Now kicks it over. Scott's going to put up a shot. No good. It's off to Mark. Uh, Howell sticks with it. She can't get it to go. Hodgson now with four looks on this possession as Lambert comes up with the loose ball. Hodgson doing a great job cr uh, crashing the glass. Lambert posting up on Fuelling. Got a good seal. Got the layup to go. Good take there by Lambert. Good entry yeah. pass. She does a nice job spinning right. Hard and strong. Good entry pass. And like you said, a nice move. The other thing we've got going on here, you and I are... We got a 360 cameras about a foot and a half away from us, bringing you all the action. You can have your own viewing experience on there. If you have virtual reality, you can even put that on and have even a better, uh, you know, better view of what it is that's going on. We got a nice new banner here hanging behind us. It's an empty look there for Holton. It's going to give it back to Hodgson, but click over. It's the first time WHOU's tried this. To our knowledge, it's the first time it's been tried at a live high school sporting event here in Maine. Is good cut there by Sydney Howell along the block. Gets that to go. So I don't know how they keep it all straight back there at the station, but all kinds of stuff going on here in WHOU tonight. Yeah, and then it's like Wild. you said the other night, always something new. And just got the word that that game is on Facebook, the Holton Callis boys. So you can catch it on Facebook Live. As Fwelling lined up a three straight away, couldn't get it to go. Off the rim, rebounding action is going to be a foul on Holton. It's going to go against Tegan Ewings. That's going to be three team fouls against Holton. The first against Ewings. Going to be Hodgson basketball. Holton with a 26 to 11 lead. 3:04 left to go here in the opening quarter. Howell with it for the Hawks. Gets it out top. Drew. Over to Cora Lambert on the right side. Another good cut there for the Hawks, and again they get it to go. Hanging tough. That was Sydney Howell getting that one to go. Excellent offense. That's twice they've set up. Uh, away from the ball screens and holds help defense a little bit slow getting there. Our friend Joe Sear letting us know it's the Southern Arista girls leading Katahdin at the half 26 to 13 is a strong drive there by Tessa Solomon puts it up can't get it to go and last touch off the Shires it's going to be a Hodgson basketball you know it, Holton got up 25 to 5 but since then there's been a good run as uh, Hodgson scored 8 of the last 9 points. Yeah. Absolutely, they're having good success pounding the ball inside. Holton needs to kind of shore up their interior defense a little bit. Just as we say that, two of the Shire stalwarts, Bouchard and Graham are going to get ready to check back in as another cut that time it resulted in a good look. The Howell couldn't get to go, but Moore stays with it. The Hawks are within 11. Here they come. Yeah, Coach Graham, I'm sure not real happy over there with their interior defense. Ewing's going to put up a shot. It's a long two, had the toe on the line as the official was right there to see it. Going to make it 28-15. Tegan's first hoop of the game, and uh, what an emergence she's had this year as a sophomore. She's just done a really good job shooting the ball and hustling. You know, she, she's done had some great games defensively. She's really come into her own as a sophomore. Millie Ivey's going to check in here for Holton. It's, this is going to be Condon Worthley and Ewing's all catching a bra uh, breather. You know, that emergence really started in that game up in Presque Isle where she had, I think it was 18 points. And, uh, you know, you'd seen glimpses as a traveling violation is going to be called there against Lambert. You'd seen glimpses, but that night she kind of exploded. Yeah, she's she's really hard worker. One thing I, I just love about her, she runs as hard as she can all the time to, to uh, fill a lane out on the fast break. Um, she's hard-nosed defensively, and she can really shoot the ball. Last word we had was the Holton boys are up now by about 20 points in the third quarter down to Callis. So back here, Bouchard dishes to Fwelling. Open look, couldn't get that three to go. Rebound brought down by Howell of the Hawks. Strong rebound there by Sydney. Drew. Looking to get it over to Scott. Instead, it's going to be stolen away. Is it's going to be Kristen Graham. Amelia Ivy puts up the left-handed look. Can't get that one to go. Rebound brought away by Howell, under a minute. Here to go in the first half of play. It said it's 56-38 Holton after three, Rob. And that's on the boys side as the shot's up, no good. Rebound brought away by Howell, second chance, third chance. Eventually up and in, Howell gets it to go, 28-17. This is an 11 point game. Yeah, Hutchins done its damage inside. Beat him up on the glass here a couple times. Welling gets the entry pass into Solomon. 
Has it stolen temporarily, and then Solomon gets it back. Power dribble, puts it up. Finds a little space. Not sure how she saw the daylight, but she got it to go. Pretty good move there by Tessa Solomon. Nice strong drop step after the bauble and uh, finished. Under 10 seconds to go here in the first half of play. Drew needs some help. It's going to be tipped away. Five seconds. And Coach Harvey calls a timeout with 3.6 seconds left. He's going to call a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it here. He really just did it to avoid the 10-second 10 10 violation. Count. Yeah, absolutely. Not a, not, a, not a bad timeout. So, so Caribou up 25-17 with five minutes left in the first half. We normally don't give you this many scores during a game, but it's the last night of the season. And again, games weren't played last night, so there's just so much movement. People want to know. You know, where where might their teams be playing if they are going to on Tuesday and Wednesday? So we want to try to keep you updated. Of course, we're covering four different games ourselves in a way, with one of those also having a second option. So a lot of people uh, tuning in to WHOU in one form or fashion. So we're going to try to keep you updated as best we can. As the ball comes in to, Jessica, uh, to Emma Drew, rather, and that's the way that the first half's going to end. It's Holton 30. Hodgson 17, we'll bring her right back here for our Katahdin Trust Halftime Show, right here, WHOU. All right, back here live at halftime from Alumni Gymnasium for our Katahdin Trust Halftime Show. The cheerleaders are performing their routine. They're going to go to the States on Saturday, and so we want to wish them good luck. And right now, Rob has made his way down to the corner. He's found our Katahdin Trust Halftime guest. So, Rob, with that, we'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Thanks, Tim. Over here with Kevin Mania, band director for Holton. Kevin, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Now, Many, many people know you because they know what a great music program we have, but, but talk to the people that don't. How long have you been doing this and what kind of got you into music and, and your career field? I've been here for 11 years now and um, I've taught in other, other towns in Maine and uh, I, I graduated in 2002 and I've been teaching ever since. Great. And we were just talking before we went on the air, it's got to be a lot of fun. Um, when the band gets cranking and the crowd gets rocking, and that happens a lot of nights with the Holton Band. Yeah, we have a lot of fun. We always try to bring our A game whenever we can to support the kids out here on the on the court and uh, just bring a big atmosphere to everything we do. Now, how much of a challenge is it? It's so tough these days. A lot of kids don't want to participate, but the Holton Band seems like the numbers are staying up. How much of a challenge is it to keep the numbers up? Sometimes it's a challenge. I think high school band, we're about 50 right now. In junior high, we're about 85. So like a game like tonight where it was rescheduled, it was hard to get kids in. But 
I invited the junior high kids in so we get a junior high and senior high band tonight. So it, it's a lot of work, but it's definitely worth it in the end. Well, you mentioned the work. Talk about the commitment it takes. Uh, how often do you guys practice and how long do you practice when you practice? Junior high has a rehearsal every, uh, every day and uh, high school practices every other day for about 80 minutes and then we split our music up between pep band music and regular concert music that we do as well. Now, of course this is a great time of year if you're a basketball fan, probably a really good time of year for a band too. You get to go to Bangor and, and is that something the band looks forward to? Is that a big deal to the band? Oh yeah, the kids love going to Bangor. They like getting out of town and going to support everybody and, and they get some of the best seats in the house over in Bangor. And it could be, if things don't fall right, you, the, the team play on separate days, you could be going down there maybe four times in a week. Yeah, it, whatever the schedule is, we're there, and uh, sometimes it's not an easy schedule. Sometimes we're playing the last game of the night, and then we're playing the first game in the morning, and then we, we travel back and forth, but uh, it's worth it. The kids love it. Well, let me ask you this. I, I love music. I, I'm not a very good singer, and I got zero musical talent, I'll just tell you that, but uh, really enjoy music. Um, what's what's your favorite song to get going with the band? Would you say Do you have one? Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of the name of the song right now. We have so many songs. Um, uh, I'm not sure. I love Cupid Shuffle. It makes everyone usually get up and dance. How about this? Here's another question. What what do you think is the toughest song that you've had to teach kids in band? I mean, there's got to be a few of them for basketball games. Let's say. Yeah. Well, last year we had. Uh, Tom Sawyer by Rush, and that was a hard one to teach the kids. It, it kind of moved around quite a bit, yep, and um, it was a little bit out of, out of the, the norm of what you hear on a pep band, but um, I guess that would be one of our harder songs, and uh, the kids had a blast with that as well. I'd like to thank you for being with us, and, and thanks for doing this. I mean, our band is just amazing. I, we say it all the time, and I really mean it. It means everything when they're here, and it's just... It's it really uh, our, our band, our music program up here, our drama program, it's just a, a cut above, I think. Of course, I'm biased, but thanks for everything you do. Thank you very much for everything you guys do and having me on today. Tim, back to you. Thanks a lot to both uh, Rob and Mr. Kevin Mania, the music teacher, one of the music teachers here at Holton High School. He directs the pet band, does a great job, has him at uh, so many ball games, hockey games, shows up for playoff soccer, uh, you know, in addition to everything else that they do with their students and their programs. And uh, I'm going to answer it for him. I love it when they play Rage Against the Machine. Is a, that's always good, and Larry's giving me a nod of approval. So we'll take a minute and a half break, and then we'll bring it right back here for the rest of our Katahdin Trust halftime, and then get ready for second half action right here on WHOU. Back at Alumni Gymnasium, both teams have made their way out as there's still about a minute 50 seconds left here on the clock at halftime. And uh, Rob, pretty good half there is 30-17 uh, holding leads, but you know, Hodge able to hang tight. Yeah, they made a pretty good run there at the end of the second quarter to tie to try to get back in. It was 25-5 at one point. Hodge made a nice run to kind of dig himself back into it a little bit. A couple more things we want to mention here on WHOU this evening. 
Number one is uh, if you are a country fan or more importantly, maybe a Southern Rock type fan, there is a concert coming up. That's gonna be on Saturday, July 7th, the Southern Uprising concert. And WHOU has some tickets you can qualify for. They're gonna be giving some away. You do have to qualify first. Go ahead, you can call the station, you can call Greg's Afternoon Drive, you can call Chris's Morning Show, or you can go online and try to qualify. Travis Tritt's gonna be there, the Marshall Tucker Band, Charlie Daniels, the Outlaws. And so that event coming up this summer, plenty more to come from the Waterfront Concert in addition to what they've already done. The other thing is, WHOU is once again going to be carrying the Red Sox. We're hoping that they can line up a slugger. They're, they've been talking about J.D. Martinez. It hasn't happened yet, but if you want to be a Red Sox advertiser, they'd love to have you. That's not expensive to bring that to you. Is uh, WEEI and, and the stations, uh, you know, it's, it's not cheap. It's a, it's a lot of ball games that they bring to you, 162 games. And so, you know, to be able to do that and bring that to you, uh, it's, I'd it's, like to keep it. I know I love um, listening to it. Me too. It's, it's, there's it's nothing more enjoyable than that no, in the summertime next I, to a I, fire. And absolutely. Laying out uh, in the sun, listening to the Red Sox, uh, some of my best memories. Larry gives us a thumbs up, and we've been doing that as long as I can remember. So if you want a sponsor for the Red Sox, WHOU is looking for sponsors. We're back here at Alumni Gymnasium. It's going to be Holton basketball to start the second half as Welling gets it in on the block to Solomon. Holton's going to work it around. Ewings is going to put up a long contested two. No good, but Graham doing work on the boards. Had a second chance at it. She couldn't get it to go. Rebound's going to be brought away. Scott of Hodgson. Yeah, it's going to see some pressure here. Colleen and Bouchard jumps a pass on lane and gets a layup. All by herself. Gets that one to go. Makes it 32-17. The pass picked off. Colleen really almost baits teams in. She does it again. We saw this a couple times as she puts that one up in left-handed. She almost baits teams into that a little bit. Hangs back. and She's very long. She's long and she anticipates well. And that's going to get Coach Harvey to want to take a timeout. Holton's doubled up Hodgson. 34-17, 7-14 left to go here in the third quarter. Back in one minute on WHOU. Back and live. Tim Tweedy joined here by Rob Moran. It's going to be a Hodge to basketball as Drew has it. Up to Scott. Coming out of the timeout. Bouchard is able to pick it off. The ball gets loose, so it's on the floor. Holton not able to hold on to it. It's going to be Hodge to basketball. Yeah, Holton had the steal, but like you said, they couldn't quite gather it in. It went into the bleachers. Ball's going to be inbounded as it's Went to Goff, then it's stolen away. Bouchard had it momentarily, and then Drew is going to be able to take it away from her. So Hodgson has it. Scott looking to go inside. Couldn't find Goff. Pass long. Bouchard picks it off. Bouchard taking it all the way strong to the rack. How about that last stride? I'm not sure where she's, she found the room. She's just, just a little ways in front of the foul line, that long stride to get all the way to the rim. Just kind of glides. Her footwork is, is crazy good on the break. Hodgson with it. They trail by 19. Goff puts up a shot. No good. Lambert. She has a second look. Can't get go. And Bouchard comes up with a rebound. Long outlet pass. One step up and in is Tegan Ewings. Right Tough place. to defend those breakaway layups. You've you, you got to get back on defense. Makes it 38 17 now. 6 12 left to go here in the third quarter. Howell and Goff on the block. Couldn't get it to go. Sticking with it. It's Howell. She can't get it to go. Lambert, another look. Hers is up and in. We just got the final, Rob, from down in Calais, 72-52, Holton pulling out the win. Yep, that's a that's a must. That was a must win. You know, maybe 
to, to at least, uh, I believe they will at least host the prelim now. And that's going to be good news. And we're not sure what our prelim schedule is going to be until everything plays out. But uh, if they play, I'm sure we'll probably have that game on Wednesday. And uh, we got to wait and see how things work out. We'll be covering games Tuesday and Wednesday. Just I, not sure what they are. I believe Lee was about four or five points ahead of them. I think Callis was worth about seven. So it, it depends on help points, but I'm pretty sure of that it's enough to push Holton by them. I'm writing a note right now. i got to slide it over to Holton superfan Gene Ross. He's here about an hour and a half early to games. He's going to want to know what happened in that one. Yeah, absolutely. So for Holton fans now, you're looking at all the other games that affect Holton. Central Aroostook Fort Kent game is a big one for Holton. Steal there by Tegan Ewings. She's going to race down and put it up and in. Yeah, Holton's really cranked up their defense. All their points so far in this quarter have been scored on transition. They haven't had to be in the half court at all. They're just getting layup after layup. Holton's up 40 to 19 now. And they come up with a steal there. Graham. Over to Bouchard. Looking to drive. Goes left. Kicks out. Welling. Going to put up a three. No good off the mark. Rebound's going to be brought down by Solomon. Good and good. Hodged him with it. Strong rebound there by Cora Lambert. Scott trying to go inside, wanted to find Lambert. Solomon for quick hands, knocks it away. It's going to stay with the Hawks. Carolyn Morris, Jamie Brown, going to ready to check in here for the Shires. Solomon and Ewings will catch a breather. All five seniors, or four seniors on the court, rather for Holton, with one junior, Jamie Brown. On the court for Hodgson, it's going to be Goff, Lambert, Howell, Drew, and Scott. Janelle Goff in, going through the lane, and she's going to take steps before her shot's off, so going to be a traveling violation there. Turn it over to Holton. Yeah, a little, little extra step on that one. Rob, you've coached at both of these schools. You live in Hodgson. You work in Holton. I mean, a lot of connections to both communities. It's kind of nice when you come to these games and you see kids from other schools sitting together. Again, that that rivalry, wherever it was, maybe it'll you know, come back at some point, maybe not, but... You know, at this point, a lot of these kids are pretty close. Yeah, absolutely. It's nice to see great people in both communities and great kids at both schools. You look at Coach Sean Graham. He graduated from Hodgson. Mr. Wendell Harvey, he coached with you here at Holton not that long ago. I mean, yeah, he uh, graduated from Holton. Yeah, so. I mean, so many connections here. The ball sailed away. Didn't get an indication from the official. Looks like it's going to be last off Holton, so it's going to be Hodgson basketball. Yeah, I think Cora Lambert took a shot to the face that time. So She is wearing okay. a mask, so yeah, we, we're going to hope she's all right. She's down with the trainer. Had a nose injury. Scott thinks about a three. Instead uses the ball fake, finds a little space, puts it up, no good, long off the glass. Rebound's going to be brought away by Fluelling. Lelling wants to line up a three. No good, but she gets her own rebound. Takes a strong, uh, or gets a strong take to the basket. Gets fouled. We'll see who it's going to be on here. 3.39 left to go here in third quarter. Holding up 40-19. That foul's going to go against Janelle Goff. That's going to be her fourth. Team's first of the second half. That free throw is no good by Fwelling. In and out. Kylie Moore's checking in. Russell's going to check in as Drew and Goff will both catch a breather for Hodgden. Fwelling with another look. That one's good. And Emma Ardell, the freshman for the Shires, will check in for the first time. She will get Fwelling. Holton with a 22 point lead. They've come out and put the hammer down on defense. Gotten a lot of breakaway layups and steals. Howell with it. Looking to go inside. Finds Redeker. Nice touch to the hoop. Yeah, excellent pass there by Sidney Howell. Good entry pass. Makes it 41-21. Holton with the lead. Brown in the corner. Finds Ardell. Short corner over to Moores. Ardell by herself. Thought about it instead. We're going to kick it out and set something up. And it's going to be tipped out. Good hands there by Sabre Scott, one of the Hodgkin freshmen. So it's going to remain Holton basketball. 
So that game up in PI right now is 30 to 29, just starting the second half. Bouchard looking to drive, knifes her way down in the lane, gets the hoop and the harm there. Yeah, and that's, that's a finish you're not gonna see a lot of people make. Real good step through and uh, athletic play. The foul's gonna go again, Sabra Scott. Rebecca Howe is gonna check in here for Holton. She's gonna replace Kristen Graham, so Coach Sean Graham is starting to empty the bench here. His team up by 22. Still so much time left in this one as that free throw is missed by Bouchard. First miss from the line tonight for her. We still got almost 11 minutes left to play in this one. Carolyn Moores coming off of the steal for Holton. Bouchard, a long pass out to Brown, leaking out. It's gonna put up the layup up and in. Nice pass there by Colleen Bouchard. She put just enough air under it to let Jamie run underneath it, get the finish. Pretty good finish too by Jamie. The other update that we have on a score here, Rob, that impacts some teams is Howell lost control and Ardell takes it away. It's Fort Kent up at the half against Central Rooster, 27-15. Yeah, that's a, that's a, a big game for the uh, Holton Shires just because they have the, the two wins over Central Roostic. So if Central Roostic wins, they get double points. Morgan Graham and Kennedy Buzio checking into the game here for Holton. How? Going to put up a three long off the mark. Rebound brought away by Redeker, but she's going to lose her balance. Holton has possession. Brown lines up a three. Front iron, no good. Ardell comes up with it. Holton with it. Brown in the corner. How? The Buzio. Now Howe's going to take a long two. No good. Again, it's Holton coming up with an offensive board. Keep sneaking into that weak side, Rob, and just kind of picking it off. Yeah, they've done a good job rebounding this group. Bazio had the pass inside to Morgan Graham. She can't get it to go, and Hawk's able to finally come up with a rebound. Russell with it for Hodgson. Gets it over. Saber Scott into Catherine Redeker. A nice move along the baseline. That's four points in a row for Redeker. Yeah, two nice moves in a row, too. I like the strong spin to the basket and a nice soft finish. 45-23, Holton over Hodgson. 108 left to go here in the third quarter. Kennedy Buzio picks up her dribble as she was in the post, needs help, and they're going to call a three-second violation. It's, I think that was Ardell maybe camped out just a bit too long. Somebody was in there, like you said, a little bit too long. Samantha Condon's going to check in for Jamie Brown. For Holton. Here's Scott with it, ball fake. Drives, working on Ardell, picks up her dribble. Gets it over to Redeker on the right side. She hits the deck, it's gonna be picked off by Emma Ardell of Holton. And Emma's a girl that's really athletic. I really like the way she plays defense too. I've always liked the way she, she works on defense and love her athleticism. Kind of blossoming athletically almost before your eyes. She's putting everything together as, uh, you know, she's really taken leaps and bounds over the last year or so. I think she's somebody that uh, you probably have some high hopes for in soccer. She, I do. She, I, I've been impressed with her there. She's pretty fast and pretty aggressive on the soccer field, and that, that'll that take you a long ways. So an awful lot of growth out of her. Rebecca Howe picks up that foul there for Holton. Uh, question at the scorer's table that they're going to talk about, and I think they've got it straight now. As the official puts the whistle in his mouth, indicating they're ready to go. Under 25 seconds left to go here in the third quarter as Russell thought about the long shot instead. Feeds it over Scott. Her shot's up no good. Lambert tracks down the long rebound and she's going to lose it to Buzio. Kennedy Buzio, the Shires. Under 10 seconds. Keeps her dribble. Gets it over. Morgan Graham. Going to take a runner. No good. Redeker comes up with a rebound and that's the way this third quarter is going to end. Right now it's Holton 45, Hodgson 23. We still got eight minutes left to go in this one. We'll be right back here on WHOU.
closing broadcast. Yes. That's my fault if you're watching online. Forgot to turn up the volume to start the quarter here. We got a straight though, because there's a foul. That's a nice move there by Autumn Ganzel for the basket. Good entry pass. Kristen Graham's going to be called for the foul. For Graham, that's her first. Pretty clean quarter there as only three fouls. There's now four between the two teams. They each have two team fouls as Ganzel gets that free throw to go. She's going to have another one. She puts it up. And that one's going to be a little bit short. Rebound brought down by Kristen Graham. Bouchard looking to drive, and she's going to be fouled. And to prevent the hoop, Hodgson commits a foul. We'll see who they get it on. She drew a crowd. She's, either way, she's going to go to the free throw line for two. They're going to get that on number 12. That's going to be Drew. Emma Drew picking that up. Just her first. Bouchard back to the free throw line. That free throw is cleanly through. Makes it 46-24, Holton. She's got another. This one's up. That one's good as well. 47-24, 7.46 left to go here in regulation. Russell with it. Over to Drew. Now in the post, Lambert looking for it. Ball's loose, Lambert picks it up. Kind of flicks it up, can't get it to go. Rebound's gonna be brought away by Kristen Graham. Long outlet pass by Bouchard. Nice pass by Ewing since she finds Solomon. That's a way to run the break right there. Yeah, beautiful extra pass there by Tegan Ewing. Nice, unselfish play and a good run by Tessa Solomon. And then a foul was called as uh, Solomon was fouled. The official called a blocking foul. So Solomon's gonna be able to go to the line. Got an earned old fashioned three point play. Holton is at their best, Tim. When they're able to get out on the break like that, they're a force to be reckoned with. You can keep them in the half court game, you you know, you may have a chance, but they get out and run on you and they're just crazy tough to stop. Well, and the ball didn't touch the floor. There's no. a rebound, outlet pass, one, one other pass, and layup as Bouchard with the steal. She's gonna take it, lay it up, and in. Makes it 51-24, Holton. It was all Holton early. They got up 25 to five, then Hodgson playing real well throughout the second quarter, made it close, but here to start the fourth quarter, Hodgson, uh, Holton starting to pull away. Right now they lead by 27. Yeah, that's 32 points for Colleen Bouchard tonight too, so. Nice take, nice take there. there. Yep. Love to see that take by Emma Drew. Emma Drew, strong take on the right, gets the layup to go. Little difference in uh, as far as experience you know, between these two teams as Ewing lines up a long two and gets it to go. But this Hawks team, you know, over the next couple of years, you know, we'll see whether they stay in C or go back to D, you know, after next year. But I think they're going to be a team to be reckoned with. They've had yeah, a lot of success at the younger levels. They've got some, some talented kids coming up as well. Good, nice move there by Cora Lambert. Just couldn't quite finish. Russell with it, though, for the Hawks as they keep possession. Get it over and a steal by Ewing's. Two on one, Ewing has Bouchard on the left, she takes it herself, and a blocking foul is gonna be called. Ewing's is gonna go to the free throw line. Yeah, not a bad foul there though by Emma Drew. Make sure she doesn't get a layup. Abby Worthley getting to check in for Holton, Sabre Scott, Janelle Goff, and Sydney Howell are all gonna check in for Hodgden. Ewing's gets the first free throw to go. Jamie Brown is going to check in here for Holton. As she's going to get the shooter, so she'll have to wait. If Ewings makes this free throw, she'll have her opportunity then. Ewings gets the second one to go. Here comes Brown. Holton leading 55-26 now. 6.01 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Again, you know, this one is probably over except for the final score, but... Uh, you know, if you want to check out what we've got going on over on the 360 stream, that's pretty cool. We've been getting texts, people telling us that they, uh, they enjoy it. Again, you can check things out in the gym, have your own viewing experience. There is audio that goes with it. Those are supposed to be lined up pretty closely. It may not be exact, but we're told it's a pretty neat experience. And, uh, you know, that might be the future of viewing sports. Might not be here right yet, Rob, but uh, how cool would that be to 
you know, be watching a Super Bowl or World Series game or whatever it may be and kind of get to check out what you want to check out. Right, absolutely. It's pretty neat. It's amazing some of the stuff you can do now. Nice move there by Sabre Scott. She couldn't get that to go. Rebounding action. They're going to have a whistle. Looks like this one's going to be against Drew. Nice. And it is. She picked up three pretty quick ones here. See Jamie Brown there, how hard she works, boxing out, battling. That's what she does. I don't know. And they're walking the other end. It's not one on one time yet, as the officials were confused. They were trying to take Brown to the line for a one on one, but six team fouls against Hodgson. Haven't reached that seventh yet. As Carolyn Moores is up now, and she wants to check in, and she will. So, I said it too, Rob, when you were making your way back from uh, your halftime interview. Tolton cheerleaders, as they're down trying to entertain the fans, they're gonna, they got their competition on Saturday. We wanna wish them good luck. Yeah, another team that puts in a ton of hours and uh, you know, great tradition for them. They've, they've done, you know, they've done really well over the years. Brown's gonna put up a long two, can't get it to go. Rebound tracked down by Fwelling. She's gonna hand it off, Bouchard. Bounce pass, Graham over to Fwelling, wide open three, gets it to go. Good ball movement there by the Shires. Yeah, that's 10 points for Aspen Fwelling, three threes. Good to see her knocking down some shots right before the tournament. She's gotten hot in the last two weeks here, really. He's, uh, she's starting to find that shooting touch. Morgan Graham gonna check back in here for Holton. She's gonna get Jamie Brown. Redeker is going to get ready to check in here for Hodgson. She'll get Russell. So my phone is just about dead, but at the moment, Presque Isle is up six over Caribou with about two minutes left in the third quarter. Still, still anybody's game. And we'll see if we can uh, get somebody to keep us updated on that as we've been getting in scores all evening here. Trying to keep our listeners and viewers updated as Fulwelling again on the left side buries a three. Another good kick by Colleen Bouchard and a good finish. She catches and shoots in the rhythm, boy. She she shoots an incredibly high percentage. Holton leads 61-26, 420 left to go. As Holton comes up with a steal, it was Bouchard. It was last touched by Hodgson, so it'll be Holton basketball. Bouchard with it, walking it up. Swings it over around to Fwelling. Welling's going to launch up another three. That might have been a heat check because she was about three feet behind the line. Couldn't get it to go, but in the rebounding action, it's going to stay with Holton. Yeah, that was a long one for sure. That was Rob Moran range right there. Yeah, a little bit beyond my range. Bouchard's going to drive left, kick it over to Morse. She doesn't get it to go, and again, it's going to stay here with Holton. Last touch by Hodgson. Nice athletic block there by Sabre Scott down low. You know, that's right, Rob. I didn't want to point this out with everybody listening and viewing, but they didn't have a three-point line when you played. Yeah. <laughs> they, they had peach baskets <laughs> way they, back when I played. Nah, they didn't. If I can't razz you, though. <laughs> There's a block shot there. It's going to remain Holton basketball. Bouchard with it for Holton. On the right side, working against Redeker. She looks to drive in the hoop. Takes two steps, can't get it to go. She, she hits the deck. Holton's going to keep possession, though. Moore's with it. Gets it over. Welling. Cross-court pass over to Bouchard. 3.39 left to go here in this one. Bouchard, entry pass to Moore's. Blocked by Howell. Hodgson's going to come up with it. It's Drew with the ball. She's working right to left against Moore's. Drew, over around to Redeker, being guarded by Morgan Graham. Working over to Howell, looks to go inside, pass picked off, it's Flelling. She's just gonna bring it up. And five new Shires getting ready to check in as Bouchard lines up a three, that one's off the mark, no good, rebound brought away by Drew. They got a two on one. It's Drew and Redeker against Bouchard now, players start to get back. Slow down the break, it's gonna go out of bounds. It's gonna stay with Hodgson. Chance here for a whole bunch of new players to come in. Worthley Brown 
Ivy, Condon, Ewings will check in. And for Hodgson, it's going to be Baruby and Russell. It's a nice round of applause here for the Holton seniors as all four of them check out along with Morgan Graham. We'll yeah, see they, if that's the final time they play. It's yeah, two minutes and 45 is. seconds left here. I'd be here. surprised if they go back in. Shot's going to be up no good there. Russell couldn't get that one to go. Rebound brought down. It's Worthley over along the side. Ewings over to Condon, back to Brown. Holton going to set it up. They're up by 35. Shot's going to be up and good long two there by Ewings. Tegan Ewings again having another excellent shooting night. 12 points for her, and she hasn't shot the ball probably more than maybe eight times. And that ball is going to sail out of bounds. It's going to be Holton basketball. So Ewings will get ready to take it out as sub here now. Fort Ken up 44 to 30 over Central Roostick after three. Condon is going to try a long two, buries it along the baseline. Nice take there by Sam Condon. Sam, just a sophomore. You know, Holt's losing a lot, but they're going to have a lot of decent players back next year, too. So, you know, Hubbard's not going to be completely bare. No, and they got a good group at the middle school level getting ready to come up through as well. A lot of talent there. I don't think they lost a game, did they, at the eighth grade level? Not, not to my knowledge. Coach Clyde Warman, since coming over here, he hasn't lost many games, period. No, but he's been loaded. He's had a ton of talent. Oh, yeah. You say, be that you say that because he's your old buddy. <laughs> no, he does a great job. The Holton, Holton coaching staff does a tremendous job, all of them. They put a lot of time in in the summer. It's nice. Baby hook up and in there by Goff. Gets it to go. Makes it 65 28. 120 left to go here in this one. Of course, Coach Wendell Harvey over there for Hodgson Girls when he was here with the Holton Boys with you. I only remember him losing maybe one game, and he probably lost one or two more than that, but it wasn't many. No, he didn't lose many. He's a great coach. And uh, you've already seen what a, what a great job he's done with the Hodgson Girls program, and expect more, more good things in the future. So we're going to have a couple of subs come in as they can get one more in. It's only four in right now for the Hawks with two waiting at the table. Just a miscommunication there, I think, between the officials and the kids kneeling down in front, but that's all right. They'll be able to come in right after that missed free throw there by Ardell. And now they get to come in as Howell's going to come out for Hodgton. So Genzel, Moores, Lambert, Berube, and Drew all in. As second free throw's up, that one's also off the mark. Just over a minute left to go. Emma Drew with it. Right side, working against Ivy. Gets it over to Baruby. Picked up her dribble. Drew. Swings it around, Genzel. Finds Baruby. nice pass. Baruby couldn't get the layup to go, rebound brought away. Here comes Holton, we're under a minute left. Pretty good pick and roll there though, just couldn't finish. Howe's going to put up a three, rolls around, no good. Baruby comes up, or Moores, rather, with the rebound for the Hawks. Good strong rebound. 30 seconds left in this one. Lambert with a good post move. Rips through, goes left, doesn't get it to go. Rebound brought away. It's Ardell. She draws a crowd, hits the deck. Ball's going to be loose, and it's going to be Condon coming up with it for the Shires. And then the pass is going to be picked off by Ganzel with 15 seconds left to go. Drives in the lane, puts it up off the glass, no good. Lambert, second look. She gets that one to go. Makes it 65-30, and we're under 10 seconds, and the crowd's starting to let these Lady Shires know just how much they've appreciated watching them over the last four years, and that's the way this one is going to end. It's Holton, 65, Hodgson, 30. We'll bring her right back here for our Pat's Pizza postgame show right here on WHOU.
going to go ahead, Rob, and we're going to turn it over to you there. Thanks, Tim. I'm over here with some reluctant lady shires who, who don't really want to be interviewed. They're, they're pretty shy, a pretty shy bunch over here. I'll start, I'll start with Carolyn Moores. Carolyn, how did it feel playing your last, last game, and uh, did you have a great time playing tonight? Yeah, I did, and it was fun to play with them for a last home season game, home game, whatever. Uh, okay, Chris, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. I know you don't really want to be talking either, but I really like how, how you pass the ball, and you've really done a really good job this year, um, all, a great all-around player. Um, is, what do you view your role on the team as? Um, basically, just to play defense and pass it. Like I don't like to shoot, so I just rebound and. I, 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 I got to say, you're an excellent passer. I also love the way you guard multiple positions. You really do a good job with that. Uh, Aspen, you, she practically ran away from the camera, but I, I managed to, to hold her in. So Aspen, how did it feel suiting them up for your last time and draining some three balls before the end of your career here? Felt pretty good, but I was pretty sad that this is the last home game with all these girls. Yeah, and then you, you girls, you guys have had an amazing career. Colleen, um, still got unfinished business ahead. What's it going to take to go to Bangor and, and uh, come out on top? Just about everything. I mean, every everyone has to contribute on the team and all around team effort. Well, listen, girls, we just want to say, uh, you know, an amazing four-year run. You guys have all done a tremendous job, and good luck in Bangor. I know you're going to do well down there. Tim, back to you. Okay, thanks a lot, Rob. And, uh, yeah. He was absolutely right. A tremendous, tremendous career by those girls there. We're going to give him a little time to come back up, and then we'll start to wrap things up, go through the final scoring in this one, talk about some of the other games taking place, and then kind of set things up for what's going to happen with WHOU next week as the prelims start. We'll take a 30-second break, hear from our sponsors, and bring it right back to wrap things up here on our Pat's Pizza Post Game Guest. It's WHOU. Back here at our Pat's Pizza Post Game Show, as it was the Holton girls picking up the 65 to 30 victory over Hodgden. Lots of games took place tonight, as uh, some of them are still underway, or we just haven't heard the final scores as they've been wrapping up. Last we heard, it was the Southern Arista girls ahead of Katahdin. They were doubling them up early on when we had heard the Fort Ken boys up over Central Arista, 44 to 30. That was after three quarters of play, so have not heard a final on that one. Uh, it also, a game we have not heard a final on yet. It was the Presque Isle boys after trailing at some points against Caribou. They pulled, They were ahead 46-37 over yeah, they're Caribou. Up, they're up 11 right now, Tim, with about six minutes left. So and that's still where time. They, they trailed by a considerable amount yeah, early on. Yeah, it was 20-7 to seven early. And then uh, in back, down in Calais, a game that WHOU was able to uh, bring you, it was the Holton boys going down there and picking up a monster victory, 72-52. And a huge win there for Coach Tim Brewer and the ball club. Absolutely a huge win. Gives them a chance to host host the prelim. And that's, I, I always felt like when I coached, whether it was at Hodgson or Holton, I always wanted to be home for that playoff game if you have to play it. And, uh, you know, I, I believe they're probably going to be playing Lee, and I believe it's going to be home. That's not guaranteed because we don't know what's happened with help points. It's, it, it could be within a, a couple points, but that certainly helps. We want to make sure. Cause. Yeah, and we thank all the folks down to Callis who, Help make that possible as well, as uh, there was all kinds of folks that you know had helped out with Fred Neen and the crew as they were going to tap in and take that video stream live off their school district's uh, website. But then WQDY stepping up and allowing us to take the audio from their radio station down there to be able to bring that to you again. Haven't heard exactly how it uh, was able to sync up as far as if the audio and video were right online, but either way. And that was a game we were just, we had three different games already scheduled. The snowstorm yesterday kind of threw a, a little bit of a jinx into that as we were actually going to be able to do that game. But when this one here got rescheduled, Rob, uh, they made it happen, found a way to bring our listeners and viewers that game. So yeah. uh, big kudos to them for making that happen. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, great service for sure. A lot of people not able to make it down, but I know there was a lot of people watching. Good. 
Well, I'm going to give you a moment to go ahead and wrap up the scoring in this one. Sure. Uh, let's start with the Hawks. They were led by Cora Lambert. She had nine points. Sydney Howell with six. Catherine Redeker with four. Emma Drew with two. Megan Russell with two. Autumn Ganzel with one. Saber Scott with two. Kylie Moores with two. And Janelle Goff with two for their total of 30. Uh, great job. Great season. Finished nine and nine. And they're going to have a prelim. So congrats to them. Good luck. Anything can happen. They come out and play hard. They, certainly they're not going to play anybody as tough as Holton in that prelim game. Doesn't matter who they play. Um, so congrats and, and good luck. Uh, the Lady Shires, they were led by Colleen Bouchard. She had 32 points. Uh, you know, we've pretty much used every descriptive word there is for her. Just a, a greater all-around basketball player and had a great career along with these other seniors. Aspen Floyling, uh, just another great game for her. Four, four threes, 13 points. Uh, Tegan Ewens, 12 points, and Tegan has just uh, done a great job, you know, getting better this year and, and stepping up and, you know, uh, just a great shooter and, and does all kinds of other things well, too. Tessa Solomon with six, uh, Jamie Brown with two, Sam Condon with two, and Kristen Graham with one for their total of 65. So, you know, a, a uh, solid game and, and – uh, you know, I, Kristen Graham had the one point, but boy, what a good job she does on defense. Guides multiple positions and a really good rebounder, a great passer. That's something that I really, I should have known this because I've seen her play a ton over the years, but this year it's really shown me what a good passer she is, um, whether it's on the fast break or down on the baseline when they're running their high-low offense. She's, she's just tremendous down there. She makes a big difference, and I, I really believe in, I don't know if it's politically correct to say this or not, but I believe if she would have played in the state championship game, we'd be we'd be talking about a four-peat right now. Last year, she wasn't able to play, and, and I, I think that made a big difference in that game. So, you know, but, uh, you know, so. I think there's a luck. lot of people that would agree with you. Good luck to the Lady Shires, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see them in Bangor. Well, look, that's going to pretty much wrap it up from here. You and I, like everybody else, want to go hit the heel points. you got to charge your phone up. We want to know. What we're going to be covering for games next week and who's going to be playing against who. Uh, you know, we know we won't have this Holton girls team because they're going to have a bye, but we could have the Hodgson girls on Tuesday. Uh, yeah, you just know, if, Especially if they go to play at Central Roostick. That'll be an easy call for us to be able to go up and, and do that one. Uh, if they go to Narraguegas, uh, it'd have to be my first trip down there. I, I've been there. It's a <laughs> yeah, long ways. Not sure if we would uh, make that trip. I, I, know the, I know the way. But it's a long ways, and the last time I went, we ended up not having to play them, so, you know. <laughs> and, of course, the Holton boys with the victory tonight, we want to see where that shakes out and where they will be. Uh, you know, just so many teams. The Southern Aroostook teams are both in it. Uh, of course, the girls will not have to be in a prelim, um, but, you know, the boys will, so we'll see what happens with that. And plenty of other area teams, GHCA, and we just we want to be able to take a moment and, and go home and, and look at that and see what we can bring in. If it's anything like what WHOU did tonight, they're going to make every possible uh, attempt to bring you all the games. You know, tonight, four games they brought to you, and uh, they also brought you uh, the 360 viewing as well. So uh, that's that. For our crew here tonight, we had got Greg Cosser back being the board op, doing a great job as always. Casey Blue running the camera. Brandon Pitts doing the production back at the studio. Rob Moran, my color man and friend. I'm Tim Tweedy. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. It was the Holton girls picking up the 65-30 victory. Check our Facebook page. Check the website. See what we're going to have for games next week. Until we talk to you again, everybody have a good night.